There are so many areas where, um, you know, sustainability is important and there are a lot of different areas that you can focus on. I think that computing isn't one that comes to mind for many people right away. Um, you know, it might be easier to, to think about, um, you know, wanting to make sure you recycle and things like that, things that are more tangible. But then computing, when it's, you know, off in the cloud, you don't necessarily realize how much energy you're using and it doesn't necessarily occur to you to reduce it. But it's actually a really important place to reduce energy use. Um, uh, at Etsy in 2021, 35 percent of the business's you know total energy use was from computing 35 percent so um it's an important it's an important area to work to to reduce and to make an impact hi i'm agv and welcome meet katie from etsy she's been working with her peers to reduce the business's use of electricity especially the kind that powers their compute resources their intention is to reduce carbon emissions from running IT operations. Katie and I are both super passionate about this topic and together we wanted to share some helpful tools that you can apply in your organization. So let's dive in. For those of you new to Etsy, it is a digital marketplace that helps creative entrepreneurs set up their online business and get found globally, such as handmaking crafters or vintage sellers. For example, I use their site to find organically sourced clothing. The company focuses on many aspects of sustainability, and so I asked Katie to share briefly on this. Etsy has a really comprehensive approach to reducing emissions from its business. We are measuring and working to reduce um, the energy and carbon that's used by our users, by our offices, by our employees who are commuting, our employees who are working from home, um, by our supply chain, our shipping and packaging, and of course, our computing. Um, we're offsetting 100% of carbon emissions from shipping and packaging. Uh, we're striving to maintain zero waste offices. We have um, uh, you know, a team of folks working in, on advocacy. We're advocating for regulation that will reduce emissions um, of the logistics and the transportation sector. We're working on reducing emissions in our supply chain you know, with partners like Google. Um, and we're also encouraging both Etsy buyers and sellers to be thoughtful. We hope, you know, we can encourage Etsy buyers to shop locally and Etsy sellers to reuse packaging and uh, use packaging that's as friendly to the environment as it can possibly be. Now, this journey doesn't happen overnight. It takes incremental steps and a commitment to want to measure things that before really weren't on our radar. For example, one can begin asking, where does my energy come from? And does the energy source change at nighttime versus in the daytime? That simple question paired with spending just a few minutes looking up your area's energy source via a wonderful and free website called Electricity Map that partners with Google can help anyone see when renewable energy may be most available to them. And we start with this excellent question since electricity historically was sourced by burning fossil fuels. But this has been changing over the last decade thanks to huge investments and accessibility in renewable and non-carbon producing energy like solar, wind, geothermal, etc., which gives us cleaner energy choices. For Google specifically, it has been important to mitigate 100% of its global and customer energy use by purchasing the same amount in renewable energy. I'm also very proud to say that by 2030, we are focused on the ambitious goal of operating our data centers on 100% carbon-free energy. But until then, it's important for each of us to reduce our IT emissions by making simple decisions on the time of day and the regions that power our resources with cleaner energy. So let me walk you through some quick recommendations. For starters, you can visit your carbon footprint dashboard within your cloud console. Folks with billing admin rights can review the built-in charts that currently show emissions data by project, by month, by cloud product, by region, etc. And note that this same functionality will also be available for Workspace customers early next year. To perform custom analytics, 
visualizations, or use this data for environmental scope three reporting, you can export this data to BigQuery. And as a friendly reminder on carbon reporting though, there's an awesome framework that helps organizations take inventory of their emissions as three buckets or scopes. Scope one and two identifies emissions that are directly under your control. And then there's scope three, which refers to indirect emissions, such as activities from transportation, suppliers, or the eventual disposal of products by your consumers, to just name a few. The next tip is to select regions that are powered by cleaner energy within your cloud projects. To help with this, Google introduced a metric called the Carbon Free Energy Percent, or CFE, which means regions with higher CFEs produce less carbon emissions. In many of Google Cloud's products, when choosing a region, there's also a friendly low CO2 icon in the Cloud Console. This icon is also annotated in the locations page of the documentation for different products. But if you're looking for proactive advice on what regions to use when comparing other factors like pricing or latency, there's the fantastic region picker tool. You can even set organizational policies to low carbon mode, which makes any new resources be created in low carbon intensive regions. You can also set up restrictions on where resources should be located by using the policy value box and entering the in prefix, and then a specific string for one or multiple locations. Another equally important tip is to go ahead and delete unused VMs, as well as shut down inactive projects. This is where Google's Active Assist tool is super handy since it uses machine learning to proactively generate carbon reducing suggestions just for you. The next recommendation is to avoid resources from running 24 hours a day, especially for development and testing. And so for example, by shifting resources to operate 10 hours a day during five workdays a week, you can reduce your footprint by 70%, which is an impactful and cost-saving move. And finally, by using managed servers, you gain two key benefits. First, you can separate storage from your virtual machines, which prevents incurring storage costs for idle resources. And second, you can refactor monolithic applications into microservices, which operate as self-contained modular functions that have less dependencies. This means they are easier to debug and you can scale their resources. So with that being said, friends, wherever you are on your sustainability journey, I hope this concise list of helpful tools inspires you to try one or more today. And for those interested in going deeper in this work, let's go back and learn some more from Katie. Etsy's journey of measuring our energy usage in the cloud probably started around 2016 when we were moving from our on-premises servers to Google Cloud. And one of the reasons we knew we wanted to move to Google Cloud was that we knew it would mean energy efficiency wins for us. We knew we would use less energy in the cloud than we were using on-premises. We at that time developed the Cloud Jewels methodology for measuring energy usage in the cloud. Um, and this is open source. You can see it on our blog, Code is Craft. You can also um, access it on our GitHub repo. And essentially what the methodology does is it takes our Google Cloud billing data, right, which includes usage units, which might correspond with, um, you know, CPU, storage, networking, memory, you know, all different services of, of Google's that we're using. Um, and we are translating those usage units into energy usage units, um, specifically kilowatt hours. And when we open source this methodology, it was really exciting to see um, ThoughtWorks, a, a global consulting agency, they have a green cloud team and they picked it up and ran with it. They expanded it both within Google Cloud um, as well as to other cloud providers like Azure and um, AWS. We at Etsy are still currently using that you know, like homegrown tool of cloud jewels. We've got a uh, data visualization tool we're using internally. We've incorporated cloud jewels into our um, 
our experimentation platform. So when Etsy product teams are going to, you know, release a new feature, they're going to test it out on the site to see what its impact is and whether it's going to, you know, achieve what they wanted to achieve. And so, um, you know, in addition to being able to understand what the impact of their feature will be on buyers, sellers, you know, web page performance, things like that, uh, they're actually going to be able to tell how much energy it's using and whether it's using more energy uh, than the old version or if it's using less energy, right? If it's if it's got energy wins. And so that means they can incorporate energy into their decision making about whether they're going to release a feature. And I think we also are excited to see um, what a lot of other companies are doing. There's one um, Organic Basics, a clothing uh, website that they have published a low impact manifesto and they've also open sourced a low impact version of their website. So as a user, you can go onto their site and you can shop, you know, via the traditional experience, or you can actually opt into a low impact experience so that you are, you know, loading fewer assets, um, using less um, computing resources so that you're having less of an impact as you browse their website. Um, I think there's so much that we can all learn from each other. So I really, I'm so excited, you know, seeing these companies doing this great work and then open sourcing it so that other folks can pick it up. Um, because I think we we all have to really work together and learn from each other if we're going to um, make the change that is needed. I love these examples. They are super inspiring. And as a fun fact, I learned that this engineering sustainability group at Etsy was first initially made up of just passionate volunteers until they eventually got full headcount. And so I asked Katie to share some tips on this journey as well. I think whether you're at you know, a small or a large company, um, when you don't have sustainability already integrated into the culture, you know, sort of like embedded in the company's goals, um, it can feel like an uphill battle to get there, but it's absolutely possible. I think anywhere you need to start small, you know, maybe with just one person who's um, you know, volunteering to drive the effort forward or uh, you know, one person who is actually a dedicated you know, employee for the effort. And um, I think that's definitely how we saw it grow at Etsy. Um, specifically in this area of reducing energy from computing, um, we started off as volunteers. We were a, um, a working group called Sustainable Compute of folks from across the company who were interested in measuring and reducing Etsy's energy usage from computing. Um, and as our, you know, our contributions to the company grew, you know, our, our responsibilities grew as well. And when they became too much for a group of volunteers to manage, we put in a proposal and said, you know, we think this work needs to be, you know, funded full time. And so we're very excited that now we have a um, a systems architect for sustainability at Etsy. Um, so I think that um, whether you're, like I said, a group of volunteers or, you know, you have folks who are actually dedicated to the effort, it is absolutely possible to make change. And I think what you want to do is you want to get sustainability, you know, energy reduction, for instance, in a company goal, once it's in a goal um, for the company, you have folks who are who are working towards it and who want to achieve it. I couldn't agree more with Katie on this. Well, community, before we end on a final fun fact that I think is so beautiful, I want to leave you with the biggest takeaway, and that's that the most impactful way to reduce your cloud emissions right now is to pick compute regions that have the lowest carbon intensity possible. A fun fact about the work that I've done um, for Sustainability Etsy is that now in my personal life, I find um, I put so much more thought into specifically energy usage from computing. Um, it's really, uh, you know, maybe easier to understand, um, you know, when you are drinking from a single use, you know, plastic container or something like that, what your impact is. But now when I'm sending a text, I'm thinking, I wonder how much energy I'm using um, when I'm, you know, writing my grocery list on the app on my phone. I'm wondering how much energy am I using? So um, it's definitely um, sort of infiltrated my personal life as well. Thank you for being here with me. Have a beautiful day.